The average American consumes 60% of their calories from ultra processed foods, AKA junk foods. And we wonder why there's a mental health crisis going on in America. In our last video, we talked about some of the root causes of depression and why your antidepressants aren't working. One of those root causes is poor nutrition. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the essential role of micronutrients in brain function. And we're going to uncover whether or not micronutrients can in fact treat depression. So stay tuned. So nutrients are foundational to all health, especially brain function. Our brains are 2% of our body weight, and we require four to six liters of blood in our entire body. However, our brains require one liter of that blood to circulate every single minute of every single day. And that's about 25% of the total blood in your body. Our brains also use 20 to 40% of the nutrients and energy that we eat. So basically when we eat, we're really feeding our brains. Brain function is dependent on brain metabolism. Optimal brain metabolism requires cofactors or micronutrients. Micronutrients are essential to life. They are required for mitochondria function so they can produce ATP or adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy molecule that is required for each and every one of our cells to function optimally. Micronutrients are also required for the synthesis of our neurotransmitters such as serotonin. So take a look here. You can see that in order to produce serotonin, first we have the building block, tryptophan, which is an amino acid obtained from protein. So once we eat that protein source and we break it down in our stomachs and we make it into tryptophan. However, before tryptophan is converted into 5-hydroxy tryptophan or 5-HTP, it requires all of these cofactors or micronutrients in order for this process to occur. So for this enzymatic reaction to occur, all of these cofactors are required. So look here, vitamin B6, B3, D3, zinc, folate, magnesium, calcium, iron, your omega-3s. You have to have adequate amounts of all of this in order for this, this one process to occur. And then for 5-HTP to be converted to serotonin, you need even more cofactors and nutrients, such as vitamin C, B6, zinc, folate, and magnesium. And did you know that serotonin is actually a precursor to melatonin? And in order for serotonin to be converted into melatonin, you need to have enough zinc and also darkness. You have to take away the light in order for your body to produce melatonin, which we talked about in that video on sleep hygiene. The other piece of micronutrients and importance in our mental health is the factor related to genes and how genetic predispositions can dispose us to mental health, including depression. However, the expression of our genes is actually dependent on many environmental factors, and this is called epigenetics. So environmental factors include things like exposure to toxins, excessive chronic inflammation, chronic stress, and of course, poor diet. You see, the process of DNA methylation, which requires micronutrients, by the way, helps to protect and repair those breaks in our DNA. And so this decreases the likelihood that gene will be expressed if we have that genetic predisposition to a mental illness or any other illness for that matter. Now, this methylation process or the transferring of methyl groups is also required for proper hormone production, immune cells, and neurotransmitter function. Without an adequate supply of nutrients, methylation will be impaired. 
Now, methylation can also be impaired by inborn errors of metabolism, such as that MTHFR gene. So those who have the MTHFR gene or any other inborn errors of metabolism will typically require greater needs for the vitamins that are affected and for those enzymatic reactions to work. And also I want you to note that the presence or absence of this gene, the MTHFR, was not a predictive factor as to whether or not someone would respond to clinical doses of micronutrients. Which brings us to the question, can micronutrients treat depression? Well, before considering this question, first, clean up your diet. So you wanna make sure to eliminate the inflammatory foods in your diet. Eliminate those ultra processed foods, those junk foods, because they are just promoting inflammation, putting you at risk for mental illness. You also wanna consider a whole foods diet. So start replacing that junk food with whole foods, such as the Mediterranean diet and the MIND diet, which we went over in our video on neuroplasticity. And if you missed that, go ahead and check it out. Also include exercise in your routine. And as we mentioned in our very first video, how exercise treats depression, adding exercise into your routine can be beneficial. It has anti-inflammatory benefits and can also increase your brain's neuroplasticity, making you more resilient against mental health illnesses, but also helping to treat depression. If you're doing all of that and you're still not seeing improvement, then you can consider moving on to supplementation and using broad spectrum micronutrients to support your health. And now the thing is, is that most of us who do make these radical changes to our diet, we get rid of the ultra processed foods and we start eating a whole foods diet, may not see a huge benefit in our mental health because our soil is now very depleted of the micronutrients that it used to contain due to all of the farming practices and all of the chemicals and toxins in our environment. And so even if you're eating organic food, the soil that those foods have been grown in or cultivated in will not have the high nutrient density that it had say even 50 or 100 years ago. And so many of us are nutrient depleted or not getting enough nutrients to support overall health and even brain function just due to that factor alone. And so now when we're talking about treating depression and we look at broad spectrum micronutrients to treat depression and other mental illnesses, you require clinical doses of micronutrients. And there's a lot of research out there on micronutrients and clinical doses of micronutrients, such as those used by Hardy Nutritionals in their daily essential nutritionals supplement, can actually in fact treat depression, bipolar disorder, ADHD, and so much more. And so make sure to go um, to the link down in the description if you're interested in looking at any of these research studies that have been done on broad spectrum micronutrients and treating mental illness. Now, if you don't have a mental illness, broad spectrum micronutrients can also be used to reduce the effects of stress and to bolster your resilience against mental illness and even other medical conditions. Micronutrients can even improve the efficacy of your medications, meaning they improve the way your medications work. So much so that you may only require low doses of your medications or you may even be able to taper off of them completely if you're on a clinical dose regimen of broad spectrum micronutrients. So therefore it's important if this is something that you would like to embark on, that you go to a provider who is well versed in using these types of broad spectrum micronutrients so that way they can safely taper you off of your medication and get you on the clinical dosing necessary of broad spectrum micronutrients to help treat your condition. So you can go to the Hardy Nutritionals and look at their provider list as well and find a provider that is trained in using these micronutrients. 
Now, I am a Hardy Nutritional trained provider. However, my license is restricted to Florida. I have a Florida license, and so therefore I can only prescribe to patients in Florida. However, I'm also a mental health coach, and as a mental health coach, I can help guide you on making educational decisions on whether or not your mental health treatment plan is the right treatment plan for you, and I can also help you be the advocate that you need to be to take control of your mental health care. So if you're interested in mental health coaching, or if you live in Florida and you're looking to de-prescribe or come off some of your medications, please go ahead and look me up. The links to my practice are down in the description. And if you'd like to learn more, check out Bonnie Kaplan and Julia Rutledge's book on the better brain. I'll make sure to have links to this book in the description and also um, a page of videos that Bonnie Kaplan has done um, that are going to be very useful for you if you really want to dig into this topic a bit more and understand more on how micronutrients can support your mental health and overall health. So there you have it. That is my overview on micronutrients and how micronutrients treat depression. Did you find this video useful? If so, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with others who you think may find it useful. As always, I thank you for watching, I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.